Hey y'all, it's the Penny Pinching Prepper here, and uh, welcome to my channel. If you like what you see, consider giving me a thumbs up or uh, subscribing. That'd be great. Um, today's topic is going to be on another fire starter and what you're going to need for that fire starter and why I suggest this fire starter. Um, first off, let's, let's go through why I suggest this one. Okay. So this is my everyday carry fire starter here. I'm sure you guys have seen it a few times on this channel if you belong to it. <clears throat> This is my fire tender. This is what we're going to be talking about today. All right. Inside of these and inside of here, <clears throat> there's 20 of these little individual, what I call my little fire twigs. I'll show you more of those again. All right. Now, the reason I came up with these is here's what's usually recommended. All right. What I'm I'm basing this off of, right? This is a pack of 20 candles. I know the glare on that's kind of hard, but when you get into comparison, now I, I could have probably even squeezed somewhere between 23 and 25 of those little sticks in this. But you think about in comparison, I could carry a couple of these, you know, four or five, six of these, or I could carry a pack of these with 20-25 in it <clears throat> all right so it's definitely a a space saver the the other reason i like these little sticks better is uh let's, let's open this let's open this up and get one of these candles out all right here's get one of these sticks out too all right I'm gonna light both of these off for you and show you the difference between the two all right first I'm gonna light this one now usually I would fray the end because I don't use a lighter to usually light them all right and let's light that birthday candle. And let's see what happens when we put it at an angle. One, look at how small that flame is on the birthday candle. But two, here it goes. Oops. Are you going to give me more? There's another one. If you're not seeing it, the wax is actually dripping off the birthday candle. Now, if you notice this one over here, the one that I made, the wax is not dripping. All right. Now, I, I know what you're thinking now. The candle might last a teeny bit longer, but I doubt it. I don't know. I've never really compared. I mean, it does seem like the candles last a little longer. But the candle, it's really hard to use anything other than a match or a lighter with. I mean, let's just be honest. Trying to start this with a, a sparker or a magnesium rod or something like that, it's it's not going to be very feasible to do that with the candle. These, on the other hand, you can use those things. And I will actually demonstrate how in a minute, because there's actually more reasons than just the fact that you're not dripping wax and you're saving space. Because you get two to three of these, the, the fire twig versus a birthday candle, when you actually compare it in size. All right. <clears throat> so... You actually get more of these so in reality even if the candle lasts a little longer who cares you've got more so uh, anyways I know what you're all thinking well that's just waxed you twine well yeah you're right but here's what waxed you twine actually looks like 
<laughs> now, are you, are you seeing how it kind of flops and bends over? All right, you can't use it like a candle, all right, to be able to light the, the twig and use it to light other parts or get into a place to, to light your fire. You have to, with these, light them. And once again, you can use a sparker, but for, I mean, look how fast they go up. But um, you have to light this and then build the fire on top of it versus pre-build the fire and put the the flame into it, which in reality, especially in emergency situation, it's better to pre-build the fire and then move your flame into the the fire versus building up around it. <laughs> All right. So jute twine that's waxed. Yeah, it, it works good. You can buy it from the store. It does the job. Birthday candles, granted, they're cheap, they're easy to come by, but they take up more space. And the other thing is, is this will get messy if you're, you know, somewhere in like Arizona, Southern California, you know, Georgia, Alabama. When you get those hot 110, 115 degree days, if you, you're out and you have one of these, this is going to melt on you and it's going to be a mess and it's going to be a pain in the butt to use. <clears throat> my little fire twig that will not happen to you all right this this will take a lot of heat i mean this will easily go up to 120 degrees and not melt inside of this little little packet here <clears throat> so there's several ways to use this and i'll show you now all right so I, I told somebody who uh, mentioned about using lint from the dryer. I, I recommended them not actually carrying that. And uh, the reason being is one, it's, it's really fluffy. It sticks up and you know, it, it, you got to compact it somehow. And even when it's compact, it's still pushing out. So um, it, it takes up space. All right. And uh, I got a pair of jeans here. Now you can use a pocket, you can use a cotton t-shirt, you can use whatever you want. But as long as you have dry cotton material, your clothing, you can actually make your own lint pretty fast and easy. You take your knife, open it up, and you just run it at an angle. Preferably in a place you don't care about getting a hole, like around the ankle or whatever. Not that you'll get a hole, but you are wearing this down and taking all the lint that's sticking on the outside. And as you see, I am making a nice little bit of lint. All right, voila, there's your dryer lint on you all the time, as long as you wear cotton, which hopefully you have some sort of cotton on you. So, I don't know, I put that away. One of the ways you can do this is you can take your little bit of lint there, take your stick here, your twig, whatever, and rough the end up a little bit, all right? See that? A little roughed up. And then you can place that on the cotton, or not the cotton, the lint. And the reason being is the lint is actually easier to start than the jute twine is with a spark and so you can actually take your spark and start the cotton like that and as it starts to flame you lift it up and now your candles lit all right
And there she goes. Now, the other way you can do it is you can actually take the time and pretend this is like um, a piece of fat wood or a stick that you're trying to feather and you can actually rough it out and create little fibers Now granted, this way's a little bit harder, but it's not impossible if you don't have cotton on you, or a dryer lint cotton clothes to make your own dryer lint like I just did. Go ahead and just feather it on out a little bit. You see what I mean there? Kind of feathered it out to where it looks like a kind of like a feather stick. <clears throat> All right, you bend that up, and I think that's going to be kind of hard to see. So let me try to bring it up to you. But you can see I have it bent up there. Okay. And that should allow you to once again get over it. Oh. See, this is what I mean. A little bit harder. You really got to make sure you get that fluffed up there real good. Try that again. Don't succeed the first time. Try, try again, all right? There she goes. Oh, before she goes out, get her up, get her breathing. All right, so that's another way you can use these. And then... The last way you can use these, you can take them and you can actually kind of do this whole windy thing to help start breaking the fibers loose. All right, which is a little, little uh, easier said than done, but then it'll break up into other ones. See, there's several strands, right? Now what we're gonna do is even break those inner strands even more all right you can see what's what's going on here right but we're going to do this a lot so that we have a lot of fluffed and exposed fibers Just rip it apart with your fingernails. Right. This is probably the most time consuming way to do it. But at this point you're uh you're no longer using it as a fire stick. You're just using it as some sort of a fire tender. So, fluff these all up. Get yourself some fluff going on. And you might not necessarily have to do it all, but... 
least get it fluffed up enough to where she wants to take a spark. And so at this point now you can build your fire around it. So this is why I like them. Like I said, 20 to 25 of them inside of something this small compared to your 20 pack of uh, birthday candles. Now granted, I will admit, birthday candles, and I know I'm the penny pinching prepper, are going to be cheaper. But here's the thing. Everything that is used to make this product is something that is very, very useful to have as a prepper, period. So, honestly, I would just recommend making the leap, making the investment, and, and buying these products to have on hand anyways, because there will be other, product, or, uh, other projects that I'll be taking you through um, that will require these these things or these uh items to have on hand so we're uh actually in this long ways and so i'm going to get to the rest of the point what you're going to need is once again a tin can all right this is mine it's already partially used all right you'll need your pot You will need your jute twine. You're gonna need the cardboard with the wax paper. Um, I believe if you've seen my other videos, you've seen me use this. Um, you can use wax paper or parchment paper. I use parchment paper so you can tape it. Holds it onto that cardboard really nice. All right, and last but not least, this is where I'm talking about spending the money. I don't use just any wax. This is the product that makes this so great. And I have another fire starter coming soon that will be using this exact type of wax. If you're wondering what it is, this is beeswax okay beeswax is an awesome awesome product anything from lip balm to um, chafing cream to fire starters to candles to um, waterproofing certain things i mean this is a product as a prepper we should all have it's so multi-useful and yes, it's a little on the spendy side, but you will definitely appreciate it as a prepper. Um, and uh, you can even chew on this stuff and get vitamins out of it. It's not the greatest tasting stuff, or I shouldn't say vitamins, I should say nutrients. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure what's all in it. That's my wife's department. We, we both have our own department and her is uh, herbal and, and organic and, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, vitamins, that's that's her department. <laughs> Not going to lie. But, uh, so, if you're interested in making this project, we're going to go through the steps on how to make it on Friday. And if you also want me to show you how to make this little pouch, um, be sure to give me a thumbs up and a comment saying that you want to see me also do this little pouch. If not, you can store them however you want. Uh, I don't think there's much more to say about it. I think that's a pretty good demonstration. We're going on 20 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this one off. Remember, God's good and God bless.